So I, I better yeah. do the official introduction. Hi everyone, okay. this is Country Music News International and today, uh, sitting in her car, I am speaking to Alyssa Bonagura. Hi! And I have one very serious question and it could be okay. quite critical to the rest of this interview and that is, okay. how many hats do you own? Um, you know, probably like 30. Okay, and I probably have about 30 hats. I, I have a big hat wall. And the thing is, is I really, I really love to wear all of them. So I don't, if I have too many, then I probably won't wear them all. But I have like 10 hats that I really wear all the time. And the others are, are kind of like every, every now and again. But this is a hat from um, a girl called Teresa Foglia. And she, I met her in California, but she just opened up a shop in Nashville. So now I'm really okay. in trouble because I'm just going to buy all of her hats. <laughs> yeah, that kind of sounds like me in guitar shops. Um, there well, you go. Yeah, yeah. You know, same thing. Well, we've got the hat uh, thing out of the way now. That's good. Um, yeah, so if, any, <laughs> if anyone's watching any videos uh, of Alyssa, you know, the one thing you're going to notice, uh, there are a lot of hats in these videos. And... I just love hats. I've always loved hats. I mean, you know, my mom yeah, me was too. a hat wearer and I just continued it. It's kind of fun. It's a good accessory. Someone told me that the first thing that people see when you're wearing a hat, when you walk into a room is your hat. So it's kind of like a statement piece, you know, it's fun. So what took you, let's change the subject completely. What took you then to Liverpool? So I was looking at places to go to college and I grew up on the road with my parents. My parents were in a band called Bailey and the Boys. And yeah. so in, in, in my life, I was always on the road, always on the tour bus, around music 24 um, seven. And it was so amazing. And one thing I really wanted to learn was how to record my own music. And so my dad and I had built this little studio in our attic um in high school and he bought me a um, an eight an eight track mini disc recorder and i started learning how to layer vocals and guitars and things like that and and then i just i realized that i wanted to go to school to learn how to record and how to be a producer um so that i could record my own music and so i looked up all these schools and and i didn't really didn't want to do like in in, in england it's so cool because if you go to school you're kind of like specializing in what you do and so in America, you go to school and you have to like still do history and math and all this, all these okay. other subjects when you've already done that in school. Mm. So I was like, I just want to go and learn how to produce. That's all I want to learn. You know, that's all I want to do. And so I found the Paul McCartney School in Liverpool. And first of all, I grew up on the Beatles, McCartney being my absolute favorite. And it was the only place I applied. And I told myself if I got in that I would go. And I got in on a scholarship with Sennheiser um, and I was there for three years and it was an amazing, amazing time. Yeah. It's an amazing place and area. Yeah, it is. So, and the other thing, yeah. of course, you were also in Yorkshire not so long ago. Yes. One of my friends lives out there and, oh. um, and we went to go visit and um, we shot a little video on his, on his farm and it was just really fun. But you're, I mean, What's cool is that my family, so my mom and my dad are both Italian, but on my mom's side, my grandmother and my grandfather, my grandfather was Scottish. So they were from Edinburgh and his wife was from Leeds. So we have a lot of like family history in mm. that part of England. And um, and so it's, it's really fun to go up there and kind of feel like your, I don't know, your soul knows it, you know? So uh, what is actually, uh, well, what are your mum and dad doing these days? They're still making music. Yeah. Um, we're, I think we're going to try and work on a Christmas album this year because one of our favorite things to do is sing together. So um, so we're just kind of, you know, the, the pandemic really brought us all back together. I was, I was on the road for about five years uh, prior to that and um, decided to move back home when the pandemic happened. And, and it was actually really wonderful to just spend time with them again. And so we started, yeah. you know, playing card games at night and cooking and singing and writing. And, um, and so it's, I just, it's so special to have that bond. I'm an only child. So they're, they're like my best friends and, um, and singing, singing with them is something that's 
it's it's out of this world you know it's really really special do you think that kind of break uh, as it were in your career led you to sort of re reevaluate what you do and how you do it was it a kind of time where you could think about that kind yes of stuff? absolutely i mean you know it changed my life you know we we lost so many shows at the start of 2020 mm. and then and then we broke up my my band which was the sisterhood band which we were I was in for about five years and um and everything just kind of shifted and and I really looked at my life and thought to myself all right like am I am I good am I good enough at this on my own you know am I what do I what am I doing you know like you really start to um kind of go through insecurities when you when you lose a lot but I truly believe that 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 whole time for me was a was a really eye opening um, experience to kind of look at my life and say, you know, what what is my purpose on earth while I'm here? What's the bigger picture? You know, I've always made music since I was a kid, and nothing's ever stopped me. Before, you know, and so I started creating more music during the pandemic, and that's how New Wings came about, um, which was my yeah. my latest single that I put out. Got a lot of support in England from that, which was so cool, and. And also here in in um, in country music, it, it was a top forty music row charting song, which was like pretty big deal for me, being an independent artist, just kind of putting things out on my own. So it just goes to show you that when you spend that time alone, you know, you really you really get stronger from the things that break you down, and and you can choose whether or not you're going to come back stronger or kind of stay in that sadness. And I just chose to keep pushing forward and moving through. That's anyway, right. let's, come, let's come back to your music because um, what I've yeah. been listening to a lot um, today and yesterday is uh, Paper Airplane. And that sounds a little bit different to, you know, some of your earlier material. So was that also a conscious decision or was somebody else involved that kind of took you down that path for those kind of sounds? Yeah, so I've, I've been really inspired by... Um different kinds of music over the years but one of my favorite bands is Coldplay and I love their production on their on their music and um and I also love Brian Eno. Brian Eno has been a huge oh, really? you know inspiration of mine as a as a producer and so with this new music when I was writing it I, I kind of wanted to um be inspired by that and when I was in the studio in 2020 by myself I just I really was was playing around with sounds and and uh, started recording these songs, and, and two of my friends um, were kind of tuning in live to some of my Instagram lives during that time. And both of them are amazing producers and writers in their own right. Um, but my friend Tom Jordan from the band Seaforth and my friend Davis Nash, um, who was out in LA, helped me kind of bring this whole thing to life. So I would start the recordings in my studio, and then I would send it off to them and they would add things and then Davis would add things and then we'd kind of collaborate together. And it just, it just brought my music to life in a, in a way that I had imagined it, but it's always so much fun to collaborate with people because yeah. you get so many different ideas and, Correct. and they kind of took what I had and then just like made it bigger, you know? So it was, it was really, it was really, really exciting to, to do that. But this whole record has a lot of those elements and, and to me, music is a, it's a playful world that you get to live in when you close your eyes and you just listen, you can imagine yourself anywhere. And, and um, that's what I wanted the listeners to be able to do with these songs, just close their eyes and listen and imagine what the world around them looks like with, for that particular story. Coming back to your uh, recordings, you know, when you first start out uh, putting something together, yeah. How much of your kind of instrumental ability goes into these songs? I mean, do you leave that up to other people to play the keyboards or play the guitar? Or is it important to you that you are also playing on these recordings, not just singing? You know, I play a lot on my recordings because I hear a lot of different parts and and a lot of my a lot of my songs come from open tuned guitars, which is very different okay. from what a lot of other people play. So I normally will start with that or start with the piano part. And then I bring other, you know, other people in to help me either make it, you know, take the next level or add something different. And um, I've always really loved collaborating, but I also think it's one thing that's been really important for me on this record is to get my, 
my my you know version of those things down yeah. and in the song because I think they're they're to me what makes me special as well as an artist is being able to play all those things too. So I've been I've been pretty conscious about that. Alyssa, I'm going to say thanks very much for joining us and thank you very much for taking the time to speak to us. We do appreciate oh, it. Thank you for having me. I pleasure. appreciate it so much. And thanks for thanks for listening to my music. And I look forward to staying in touch with you. Yep. OK, so you take care of yourself. Stay safe, stay healthy and all that good stuff. And uh, we look you forward too, to seeing Nigel. you over here sometime soon. Bye. Awesome. Thank you so much. Bye.